Meet Bob and Nancy again. Bob now understands why his team chose microservices and what microservices are. If you are still wondering what microservices are, you should hit the link in the description to go back to the previous session of this series. Bob is familiar with Java, Spring, and Maven. He has also used the Eclipse IDE. If you are like him, this tutorial will enable you to jumpstart on writing your first Java microservice. Before we start, let's have a quick recap of what microservices are. Microservices are independently deployable and testable. They share nothing amongst themselves. Each microservice chooses its own stack. Organization structures reflect the microservices architecture. During the rest of this series, Nancy and Bob will team up to build a collection of microservices for an e-commerce website. They will build services to fetch customer, product, and pricing data. They will also build an order service that will consume all these other services. Customer, product, and order services will be built using Java, while the pricing service will be built in Go. Nancy walks Bob through the different ways of building microservices in Java. Since microservices need to be an independently deployable unit, we will package all artifacts of the Java microservice in a JAR file. There are multiple ways to develop microservices in Java. You could either choose to handpick and manage all dependent third-party libraries for a Java service manually or use frameworks like Spring Boot or Wildfly Swarm. Wildfly Swarm packages the bare minimum server runtime with a Java Enterprise Edition application to create the JAR file. I will leave a link in the description for those who are interested in Wildfly Swarm application development. Our tutorials will use Spring Boot as it is a simple and fast Java development environment for Spring applications. Bob asks Nancy how Spring Boot is able to achieve this. Nancy tells Bob that Spring Boot eliminates a lot of boilerplate code and replaces configurations with opinionated default values to make it fast. Spring Boot also provides quick start modules for many common development activities like web development or database access. Spring Boot comes with a simple command line interface, has embedded servers like Tomcat or Jetty. Spring Boot comes with plugins for build tools like Maven or Gradle and in-memory databases. Bob tells Nancy that he gets it and is curious about the disadvantages of using Spring Boot. Nancy tells him that the disadvantage of using Spring Boot is really about the intensive effort required to migrate a legacy Java application to Spring Boot. Nancy tells Bob that she would show him a Hello World application using Spring Boot and that would help Bob understand Spring Boot microservices and appreciate them better. Nancy opens Eclipse to show Bob how to create his first Hello World service. Nancy creates a new Maven project. She would keep the group ID as com.tutorials while she will use the artifact ID as hello world. She would leave the packaging type as jar and complete the creation of the project. Nancy tells Bob to inspect the folder structure that Maven has created. She points him to the fact that 
there are separate folders for the main code base and the test code base and resources are segregated too. She points out that Maven has introduced a POM file while generating the new project. Nancy and Bob are now inspecting the generated POM file. It contains all the values that they entered while creating the Maven project. They are now going to add a parent section. This parent section contains a parent module starter. This starter module provides Maven defaults. Nancy tells Bob that Spring Boot provides many such starter modules to help manage class path dependencies. Given that we will be building a web application, we will add a dependency to the web starter. Other applications which may have a database dependency can add a corresponding starter module. Nancy tells Bob that we are now ready to start writing our first microservice in Spring Boot. And she also tells him that she would walk him through the Hello World microservice that she had put together so that he could go ahead and create one of his own. And she tells him to take a look at the code and points him to the REST controller annotation that is out there. This annotation tells people and Spring that the class that contains this annotation is a controller. It also tells Spring that any method in this class which has a request mapping, like in this case, we have the hello method which has a request mapping, will have to be responded with a web response body. She also talks about the enable configuration annotation that you see beneath the REST controller. This tells Spring Boot to guess and configure Spring Beans based on the dependencies we added in the palm.xml. Given that we had the web starter configured in our palm.xml, Tomcat and Spring MBC would have been configured automatically. The enable auto configuration annotation will add beans into the spring context with the assumption that we are building a web application. This annotation not only works well with starters but also with third-party jars if we intend to add them. Nancy tells Bob to inspect the main method. The main method looks very similar to what you would have on a conventional Java program. Inside the body of the main method, all you see is a delegation to the Spring application class. You see that we are calling the run method of the Spring application class. And we pass hello world.class, which is this class, as an argument. This is to indicate to the Spring application, the primary Spring component we are interested in executing is the Hello World class. The Spring application takes the Hello World class, initiates it with the embedded Tomcat server. Nancy tells Bob to observe the method called Hello that is out there in this class. It has an annotation called the request mapping right above it. It takes an input parameter, which is a slash, which touched upon this annotation a little bit while we talked about the REST controller. This annotation is responsible to finalize the URL path through which this method will be exposed. This service can be accessed using the URL HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon port number. This service will return back a response body. Nancy tells Bob that we are now ready to run our first Hello World microservice.
Both of them watch curiously as the server starts up. Now that they have the server booted up, they are opening the terminal and they are going to test this by using the curl command. Oh, here we go, Bob. We have our first working microservice. Bob tells Nancy that he is confident that he can now build REST services using Spring Boot. Nancy tells him that this is just the beginning. She would show him how to use Jersey with Spring Boot in the next session. You can download the source code for this Hello World example from the link in the video description. Share this video with everybody who is like Bob. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to continue learning with Nancy and Bob. Signing off with Nancy and Bob is Arun Paneyapan.